it's a it's a fascinating industry, isn't it? Because there's there seems to have been uh, this synthesis or this kind of um, um, these parallel kind of lanes or streams of knowledge that have really come together in the services sector and in the um, technology sector in particular. I kind of think um, about some everyday products that most of us would understand. If you take a motor vehicle, for example, you can see how much effort has been put into designing that particular product to suit a human being. Um, you know, whether it's the shape of the chair and the steering wheel and how, you know, the levers that you need to work with and interact with, um, we can sort of get a sense of how human-centred design is um, is actually really valuable uh, and really important when we think about a physical object or a physical good. Um, but um, some people find it, well, I think a lot of people find it hard to actually then transpose or uh, uh, take that same theme and concept into the provision of um, services, and I suppose we could we could say into the provision of um, healthcare. Um, what's what, what do you say to that? Does that sort of uh, appeal it's to you? Uh, that's two things that uh, that started going on in my mind as you were talking about. One is uh, uh, early in my education, I did a, a subject called human factors, and that's kind of the father of human centered design. Is understanding the factors in humans that we should consider when we design something and uh, absolutely cars were part of the literature that we had to read and, and there's been a lot of thought put into our mental model of how we think you operate a vehicle so obviously if you get that operation wrong you crash uh, if you're clicking on the wrong thing at the wrong time you crash so there's been a lot of thought put together on how humans interpret the physical handles so that we don't make the mistakes. The, the classic one that we all experience is when we go to uh, uh, Europe or America, and we turn on the wipers instead of the instead of the signal to turn <laughs> right or left. And, that, yes. and that's been that's been thought through. That experience has been thought through, and it's just because we switch sides. But in the past, these things were, had um, no conf standard configuration, and you had to learn every vehicle, and it wasn't intuitive, and it led to a lot of accidents. Planes is another one that, that there's lots of little gadgets to interpret and understand how to use. And, and one mistake can, call, can cost the deaths of many uh, passengers. I think um, when it comes to health, I, it's, it's also life and death. So if, if, you're, if you've got an oxygen tank and it's got half meshes, and this is a real story, uh, and in the mental model of the of the nurse, putting it in between two and three is just enough oxygen for the patient. In the way the manufacturing gets, gets done, that actually ceases the oxygen from flowing if you put it in between meshes. And therefore, you could literally kill a patient through the design of a physical object. On the interface side of things, there are, there are um, um, there's the distribution of medications that need to be accurately entered into digital devices. If you get that wrong by adding an extra zero or an order of magnitude, you kill someone. And therefore, in, in the health industry, there's also been a particular attention to certain aspects of, of better design. In services, I think uh, our expectations are raised. We've got, uh, we've got really uh, good examples of good user experiences with Apple and Google. And therefore, when we don't get those experiences, we know something's wrong. We might not be able to describe what's wrong, but we know that it's, there's something's wrong. And, and I think there's more effort being placed in understanding how we s support humans through the products that we create.